What would you do if the stock market suddenly dropped by 50%? If real estate followed suit as 40% of your home's value abruptly vanished? And if 30% of your savings just disappeared? A scenario like this, it's hard to fathom, but unfortunately, one of the most respected economists in the world says you need to prepare for an event such as this one right now, as a looming collapse is not only possible, it is inevitable. In this new video, this economist holds nothing back. He reveals everything in plain daylight using unique methods. For example, he uses a $5 bill to prove the economy will come to a standstill. He uses indisputable charts that prove we are facing a 1929-style Great Depression all over again. And he even uses a sandcastle to prove our elected officials ignored our Founding Fathers' warnings and have thus unleashed an unforgiving curse on our economy. Now, before you dismiss his predictions, please know that this rogue economist has been the secret man behind some of the biggest movements and most successful companies in America for the last four decades. Because of his accomplishments, he's been invited to shake hands and counsel the likes of former presidents Ronald Reagan and Bill Clinton. And he's had the good fortune to befriend and brush shoulders with George Bush Sr., Steve Forbes, Margaret Thatcher, Sir Roger Douglas, and Boris Yeltsin, to name just a few. Perhaps more importantly, this economist stresses that there is no need for you to fall victim to this inevitable collapse. He will even show you what he is personally doing to protect and grow his wealth and that of his family. As you will see, if you are on the right side of what's ahead, you could seize opportunities that come along once, maybe twice, in a lifetime. There is money to be made, and in the following video, you will see how easy it is to do it. I repeat, these are the same solutions that this economist is personally using, and I am confident that they will be easy for you to use to both survive and prosper in the days ahead. If this economist is right, just like he's been so many times in the past, the stock market will soon plummet 50%, real estate will drop 40%, and savings accounts will lose 30%. I have no doubt that six months from now, you'll look back on this day and you'll be glad you took the time to watch this video. Take a look at this sandcastle. It looks amazing, doesn't it? And at first glance, America looks amazing, just like this sandcastle. We have our oversized homes, two cars in every garage, cell phones, laptops, and flat panel TVs. We have health care and education for everyone, top-of-the-line infrastructure to help business prosper, and modern luxuries that most of the world can only dream of. Many of us even have maids to clean our houses, nannies to watch our children, landscapers to manicure our lawns, and fine restaurants to dine in whenever we choose. But things aren't always as good as they first appear. While things might look great up here, nobody is paying attention to the massive economic cracks that are quietly forming beneath our very feet. Throughout this presentation, I'm going to show you what these cracks in our economy are and how they will lead to a widespread collapse unlike anything we've seen in our lifetime. However, these economic cracks are not the core of our problem. They are merely symptoms of a much greater disease. You see, these cracks are forming not in isolation, nor are they forming out of random chance. These cracks are forming because the very base of our entire country rests on this unstable foundation. You will be shocked at why our foundation is quite literally this frail. Ironically, much of our prosperity is linked back to this very problem. You see, this foundation was the exact reason we in America were able to construct our big homes, put two cars in every garage, and build such a great infrastructure. It's why we were able to make America amazing over the last several decades. But this foundation has started to weaken, one grain of sand at a time. And there is nothing, absolutely nothing, that can be done to prevent this frail foundation from continuing to weaken and ultimately collapse. There is no stimulus package from the government that is big enough, no interest rate cut dramatic enough, and no tax cut deep enough to prevent the inevitable. In fact, it's a curse on you and your family. 
If that comes off harsh, don't get mad at me. Get mad at James Madison, the father of the Constitution and the fourth president of the United States. He warned us about going down this road and said that if we ignored his warning, then this weak foundation would become a greater curse than any other. As you can see, all it will take is one grain of sand, just one, to send everything crashing. In the end, we will see the stock market tumble by 50%, real estate will plummet by 40%, savings accounts will lose 30%, and unemployment will triple. As you will see in this presentation, there's little time left to prepare. According to my calculations, this collapse isn't coming in a year, six months, or even three months. It's already begun. Things are starting to unravel at a rapid pace as America is being hurled into the worst economic hell our country has ever seen. My name is James Dale Davidson. And while I may be using some simple analogy of a kid's sandcastle to make a point, make no mistake, the financial cracks that are forming underneath your feet are real and they are expanding at this very moment. And when this curse sends everything crashing, it will be damning for those who are unprepared. I know that what I am saying to you right now might come off as extreme. Perhaps you doubt my predictions, and that is fine. But please know that people doubted me when in 1987 I predicted the coming collapse of the Soviet Union, when in 1989 I predicted the Japanese depression that struck just one year later, when I predicted the dot-com crash in 1999, and when I predicted the subprime mortgage crisis along with the collapse of the real estate market years in advance. When I made these predictions, many people laughed at me. In fact, in 1987, the Wall Street Journal denounced my predictions as no more than the natterings of a dopey ant, and Newsweek magazine scorned me saying that my forecasts were an unthinking attack on reason. But I didn't let the insult stop me. I continued on and wrote several best-selling books, including Blood in the Streets, The Great Reckoning, and The Sovereign Individual each book making bold predictions that came to fruition. Because of my track record of making these major predictions, I have been invited to shake hands and counsel the likes of former Presidents Ronald Reagan and Bill Clinton, and I've had the good fortune to befriend and brush shoulders with George Bush, Steve Forbes, Donald Trump, Margaret Thatcher, Sir Roger Douglas, and even Boris Yeltsin. Now, I want to be clear on something. I'm not a guy that likes to preach doom. In fact, I spent most of my time showing others how to prosper. During my career, I've made investment recommendations that have spun off a good deal of money, like the 10 million windfall I banked in a natural resource company, and the time I told people to scoop up Philip Morris for gains of 405%. And although our future may seem bleak, as I am about to show you, there is no need for you to fall victim to the future. If you are on the right side of what's ahead, you could seize opportunities that come along once, maybe twice in a lifetime. There is money to be made, and I will show you how to make it. So again, I'm not the type of person who likes to go around preaching doom. But when the evidence for a collapse is so glaringly clear, and when nobody else is signaling a warning, I take it upon myself to do so. And I know that everywhere you look, an effort has been made to make things look pretty good. The market is near all-time highs. We're told that unemployment is low, the dollar is strong, and real estate is supposed to be booming again. But it's important you remember that it looked pretty good for Japan in 1989, and it looked pretty good for the Soviet Union until the day it collapsed. And lots of measures looked good for America in 1999 and for us again in 2007, but we all know what happened next. I predicted all of those unravelings before they became headlines. What I'm telling you now will come to pass. It's already happening. Millions will suffer, but you don't have to be one of them. One more note before we start the presentation. While I may be a famous economist who is known for making incredibly accurate predictions, I am also a husband and father. And today, as I speak to you, I guess I'm speaking to you on a more personal level. 
because I'm concerned for my family and friends, and you should be concerned for yours as well. That's why I want to send everyone watching today a copy of my newest book, The Age of Deception. This book will give you a rare glimpse into how the U.S. government lies and deceives its citizens. It will give you a peek inside the Wall Street machine to see how it manipulates the markets to beat everyday investors. And the book will also explain in great detail how America is being destroyed from a disease within. You're going to love the book. In fact, in one of my favorite reviews to date, the famous billionaire Peter Thiel, co-founder of PayPal and early Facebook investor, as well as a friend of mine, wrote me and said, I am an extremely big fan fan of your writings, which have shaped my thinking about the markets and the macro world as a whole, perhaps more than anything else. Armed with my book, The Age of Deception, you will not only be able to preserve the quality of life you and your family deserve, you'll be able to prosper at a much higher level. Now, as I mentioned, there are cracks in America's economic foundation. Today, we're going to discuss five of those economic cracks that concern me the most. They are the inevitable stock market wipeout, the looming home equity slaughter, the $46 trillion wealth transfer, the dwindling velocity of money, and the silent wealth confiscation. Then we will discuss how all of these cracks link back to the core of our foundation being so weak, and why James Madison called this a curse that is destined to cause the collapse of America. In fact, this collapse has already started. During the next six months, you will see the stock market plummet by at least 50%. Real estate will drop 40%. Savings account will lose 30%. And unemployment will triple. It's already starting to unfold. Let's take a look at crack one. Economic crack one is the inevitable stock market wipeout. Yes, the stock market is near all-time highs. In fact, it's up 200% since its low in 2009. That is an historic rally. But this rally is coming to an end. The writing is on the wall. Let me show you a few of the indicators that tell me exactly why this will happen. The first indicator is the New York Stock Exchange margin debt. This is something that nobody talks about. Essentially, this measures the amount of money that's being borrowed to invest. What this reveals is that banks and Wall Street firms are leveraging all the money they have at dangerous levels. This is gambling and speculation in its most extreme form. Take a look at this chart. The red is the margin, the blue is the stock market. Keep in mind that the stock market in this chart is adjusted for real growth, so it's inflation adjusted. The interesting thing about this is that margin debt rises when investors feel good about the prospects in the stock market. In other words, it's when people get greedy. And as Warren Buffett says, be fearful when others are greedy. You see, these margin levels have never been as high as they are today. People have never been this greedy, this willing to take on a large amount of risk. The last time margin debt was close to being this high was 2000 and 2007. And we all know what happened soon after. Stocks dropped 50% and 55%. Now there's another reason this matters. Since it is clear that the stock market is going up because so many people are gambling with margin, with debt, then when the market starts to pull back, it will be fast, real fast. As stocks go down, investors will get margin calls and they will be forced to sell their positions immediately, which will accelerate the market sell-off. The second indicator is something that is often ignored by most economists. It's called the stock market participation rate. This simply measures the volume of the stock market, and it's at astonishingly low levels for a market selling at such high valuations. You see, after the last crash of 2008, Many people have resisted getting back in the market. This chart reflects that. See how the stock market is up on low volume. So essentially, although the market has hit all-time highs, there aren't a lot of people investing. Never before in history has there been a sustainable market rally on low volume. 
never. Now let's pause and think about this real quickly. How could the stock market go up if the participation rate is low and if margin debt is high? A big factor is this, stock buybacks. Companies are borrowing money at low interest rates to buy their own stock. And right now, stock buybacks are running at a record rate. They are on course to exceed $1 trillion this year. Instead of investing in the future, companies are engaged in full-blown financial engineering, tried to make their share prices go up even when their profit margins have been falling. It would be like you getting a home equity line in your house to buy your own house at a higher price and then saying it is worth more money. That is financial engineering. Yet that is exactly what Wall Street is doing. Another indicator is the price to earnings ratio of the stock market. The price to earnings ratio measures the price of the stock market versus how long it will take for the stock to be worth that price. And it is hitting all time highs. In a healthy normal stock market, the Schiller price to earnings ratio is about 16. That means it will take 16 years for a stock's earnings to equal its price. But right now, the average stock in the S&P 500 is sitting at a P.E. ratio of 27. That's nearly 50% higher than the normal ratio. The only other times we have seen the price to earnings ratio this high was in 1999 and 2007. Again, both times this happened, stocks dropped by 50% and 55%. So we know that we have fewer people trading but they're using more margin and they're pushing the P-E ratios to dangerous new highs. Now, these are just some of the indicators signaling that a massive collapse, which will blindside most investors, is coming very soon. To be frank, a 50% correction in the stock market is actually a conservative estimate. If the market drops to its 2009 lows, we'll actually see a 70% correction. Is that possible? This is the same chart I showed you earlier. If the market returns to its 2009 lows, it will be back down to 6,500. That would be a 70% correction. Now this inflated stock market, well, it's just one of the cracks forming in our foundation, only one. There are four more I will discuss. And just think, if the stock market bubble is only one crack in this foundation, you can only imagine how bad this curse on the American public is going to be. This is the reason why all of these cracks are forming. You see, the stock market's rally and ensuing collapse isn't the main problem. It is a symptom of a deeper disease, the curse, the result of our economic foundation being this fragile. The core of our foundation is getting weaker every day. At any moment, a single grain of sand could fall and cause everything to implode. When it does, it will be like 1929 all over again. The stock market will sink by 50%. Real estate will plummet over 40%. Savings accounts will lose 30% of their value and unemployment will triple. I will show you exactly why I believe this is inevitable and why those who prepare now will prosper. It's already starting to happen. But again, there is a way for you to survive, and I will show you how. It's the same way my family and I will survive and prosper. Just like people made fortunes in the 1930s, you will be able to make fortunes over the next six years. And I will show you exactly how to do this. First, let's look at the other cracks in our foundation. Just like the government wants to ignore the greedy stock market rally, they also want to ignore these problems as well. Economic crack two is the looming home equity slaughter. From the bottom of the real estate market in January 2012, prices are up about $40,000 per home according to the Case-Shiller Index. But I'm convinced that real estate prices are about to retreat even lower than their previous lows. Because the fact is this real estate market has gone up despite some very troubling hints that it could head down again real quickly. For example, take a look at this chart. You can see that the home ownership rate is at its lowest level since 1965. Think about it. How can real estate prices be going up when the percentage of Americans owning homes is nearing an all-time low? 
How can real estate be strong when homeownership is at a 50-year low? I did some investigating and here is what I found. Over 10 million Americans lost their homes from the last crash. Of course, some of the largest players in Wall Street saw this as a buying opportunity. So they went in and bought the properties at steep discounts. The biggest buyer is Blackstone Group, the largest private equity firm in the world. It spent $7.5 billion acquiring 41,000 houses. So home prices are going up because big investment companies are going in and scooping them up in droves. But think about it. If we learned anything from the subprime collapse, it was that real estate prices can't keep going up far beyond the point where home buyers can afford them. Prices will ultimately head back down. If you own a home, there is a reason for grave concern here. One of the only reasons that they have not already gone down is because mortgage rates are still at an all-time low. What happens when mortgage rates go back to their normal rate of 6 to 8 percent? All of a sudden, the carrying cost of a mortgage doubles and the price one can pay for a house goes down. If mortgage rates go back to 7.5 percent, home prices would have to drop 32 percent just to keep the same monthly payment. And trust me, mortgage rates will go up. So prices must go down. Expect real estate prices to pull back 40% as millions of Americans are priced out of the current real estate market and as these big investment companies suddenly have to unload the properties they are speculating on. Much of the equity homeowners have will get wiped out in an instant. But I have found a way for my family and me to survive and prosper. I want to share that way with you. It starts with you getting a complimentary copy of my new book, The Age of Deception. But I have a bigger plan for you to prosper for years to come, as I will describe in a moment. But first, let's take a look at the other cracks in our economy that are forming underneath our feet. Economic crack number three is the $46 trillion wealth transfer. As you likely know, about 70 years ago, after World War II ended, there was a massive increase in babies being born. U.S. births increased at an unprecedented rate for the next 18 years, as you can see in this chart. This group of 76 million Americans that I am part of became known as the baby boomers. These baby boomers, although they only represent 32% of the population, are the most powerful demographic force in history. They controlled $46 trillion. Perhaps a better way to phrase this is to say that baby boomers control 77% of the total net worth in America. But in 2007, we baby boomers started retiring. Up to 50 million of us baby boomers will exit the workforce over the next 14 years. That's 10,000 people retiring every day or one person retiring every eight seconds. Again, baby boomers control 77% of the net worth in America. And this massive group of people who control 77% of the net worth are going into retirement, so they will no longer be working, spending, and investing. Let's break that down. Instead of working and paying taxes into the government, they rightfully start collecting money from the government through Social Security and Medicare. So less tax revenue for the government, more expenses for the government. That is not a good equation. And instead of spending money, which stimulates the economy, they start saving money. After all, they already have their home, their kids are out of the house, or at least should be, and other major purchases are done. Their major assets are paid for. Now is the time for us baby boomers to reap the rewards. And rightfully so. This reduction in spending is another bad equation for the economy. And instead of investing in stocks, which helps corporations grow, baby boomers start looking for guaranteed income and safety through CDs, bonds, money markets, and regular savings accounts. So instead of investing in America's future, they have their money in safe places. Not a bad thing for them. It's what they should do. But again, this is a bad equation for our economy. This simple fact that 10,000 baby boomers are retiring every day who will transfer $46 trillion and therefore will be paying less in taxes, spending less, and investing less 
is so basic that most economists don't grasp it. They would prefer to blame economic recessions on things like bad weather, fear in the stock market, or insufficient government spending. When you get your copy of The Age of Deception, you'll understand how to protect yourself and how to prosper. Clearly, while this retirement wave isn't good for America's economy, there is a way to personally benefit from it. Let's move on to the next two cracks, and then we will discuss why our foundation is so weak and why James Madison prophetically called it a curse on the American public. Economic crack four is the dwindling velocity of money. Most people have never heard this term. It's simply the ratio of nominal GDP to the nominal money supply. Or it's just a measurement of how fast money moves through the economy. Here is how it works. Take this $5 bill. Let's say I use $5 to buy a hot dog. And the hot dog vendor takes this $5 bill to the bakery to buy some more buns. And then the baker takes the $5 bill to buy coffee beans. In this example, this $5 bill I spent within a few hours had a velocity of three. This $5 went to $15 worth of goods, the hot dog, the buns, and the coffee beans. Now let's say I was on a budget and I never spent this. Now my $5 has a zero velocity. Or let's say I never got the $5 in the first place because I'm out of work. Again, the money is not going anywhere. And today the velocity of money has plummeted. Let me show you. This chart clearly reveals that money velocity has fallen off a cliff since the late 90s. The velocity of money has never been this low, ever. Money just isn't moving. This is a reflection that our economy is stagnant. Every time this $5 of mine is spent, Uncle Sam takes his share in taxes, roughly 6%. Those taxes don't get paid if money is sitting in bank vaults. And the hot dog vendor can't buy more buns and the baker can't buy a cup of coffee. It's an economic traffic jam. When you combine this serious crack in our foundation with the other cracks, things could spiral out of control quickly. And though the coming collapse will devastate millions of Americans, there's no reason for you to get crushed by it or your friends and family. Let's take a look at crack number five. This crack is called the silent wealth confiscation. I'm talking about the demise of the dollar and how it could wipe out your savings. You see, over the last year, the U.S. dollar has actually gained 30% in value. The reason? A short squeeze. Basically, foreigners had a $9 trillion bet that the dollar would go down. When they were wrong, there was a short squeeze. They had to buy the U.S. dollar to cover their losses. It's a bit complicated, but here's the point. The rise in the dollar is a great thing for U.S. citizens. It's a great thing for you, but it will not last. That is a certainty. And as you have likely heard, you don't ever want to own something on the top. And that is especially true when that something is in a long-term downward trend. Again, as Warren Buffett said, sell when others are greedy. Now is the time to sell the U.S. dollar. If you look at this chart, which is an expanded version of the one I just showed you, you can see how the U.S. dollar has gone way down in value since 1970. And that trend will resume as the U.S. economy weakens. You see, the dollar might look good now, but it is really only the nicest looking currency of a bunch of ugly looking currencies. As the international landscape settles down, expect the value of the money in your bank account to dwindle by 30% within a year. And then expect it to continue to lose another 20% over the next few years for a total decline of 50% or more. As a result, everything you pay for will go up in price from gas to utility bills to food. But there is a way for you to preserve your wealth and your well-being, for that matter, even as the U.S. dollar goes down. There is a host of opportunities that soar when the dollar sinks. I will show you how in a moment. So to recap, these are the five cracks in our economy. The inevitable stock market wipeout, which will lead to a stock market crash of 50%, perhaps as high as 70%. The looming home equity slaughter 
which will lead to a real estate crash at 40%. The $46 trillion wealth transfer. The dwindling velocity of money. The silent wealth confiscation, which will eliminate 30% of your savings and maybe as much as 50%. But please know these are not the only cracks in the foundation. There are many more cracks forming. For instance, take unemployment. While the government officials love to brag about a 5.5% unemployment rate, this is not accurate, not even close. Here's why. In 1994, long-term discouraged workers, meaning those who have been unemployed for more than two years and are no longer collecting unemployment benefits, were defined out of existence. The government literally pretends they don't exist. The more accurate number, the real unemployment number, is over 23%. So nearly one out of every four people who should be employed are not employed. How can we have a healthy economy if this many people are unemployed? This also explains why 47 million people depend on our government for food stamps, a rate that is increasing at a very dangerous pace. Another economic crack is the erosion of the middle class. A recent Pew Research study reveals that the percentage of middle class Americans has shrunk in every state since 2000. What is worse, according to the Census Bureau, median household income peaked in eight out of 10 counties around the 1960s and 1970s. Since then, middle-class income has been shrinking. And then there's the student loan bubble. College education costs have risen 1,134% since 1978, when the Bureau of Labor Statistics started tracking it. That price has gone up 10 times faster than the cost of a new car. Right now, there's a total of 1.1 trillion in student loans. According to Bloomberg, only 37% of all student loan borrowers are up to date on their payments. Here's why. More than half of America's recent college graduates are either unemployed or working in a job that doesn't require a college degree. Again, this is another hint that the cracks under the facade of prosperity are widening dangerously. This is unsustainable. There are many more economic cracks, but I don't have time to go into all of them right now. What is most alarming is that they are all linked back to the core of our foundation being so weak, to what James Madison called the curse of the American public. The unnerving thing about this weak foundation is that nobody talks about it anymore, not for years, and the situation has only gotten worse and worse. I'll explain what this horrific situation is in a moment. First, I want you to know that there are solutions to these problems, and I want to quite literally put those solutions in the palm of your hand. Again, these are the same solutions I'm using for my family, and I'm confident that they are appropriate for you as well. It starts with you claiming a free copy of my book, The Age of Deception. But that's not all. I am also going to give you a risk-free membership to my newsletter called Strategic Investment. Strategic Investment is a simple 12-page letter that I have been mailing out monthly since 1984. Part of that newsletter is a model portfolio that you can track on your own. Just take a look at some of our winners from that portfolio. I'm not going to read off the results to you. You can see for yourself how readers of strategic investment benefit. In strategic investment, I explain what's happening in the economy and how Main Street investors like you can profit. I explain what my family and I are doing to protect ourselves and how to navigate the markets for higher returns. And in the model portfolio, I tell you exactly what I think you should buy, at what price to buy it, and when to sell it. It is very easy for you to follow. Again, the results you are seeing on your screen now are from that model portfolio. And at the end of the presentation, I will show you how you can get a risk-free membership to my strategic investment newsletter so you can have the chance to profit alongside my current members. You need it now more than ever. The economic cracks forming under your feet at this very moment are a direct result of this unstable foundation. Of course, the big question is, why does our foundation look like this? What is the curse? If all these other economic calamities are merely cracks, then what could this problem possibly be? 
let me show you. Sadly, the core of our foundation looks like this because instead of achieving prosperity through productivity like our forefathers did, our nation for the last several decades tried to achieve prosperity through borrowing money. Our government got into debt, massive debt, an addictive debt that fuels its own addiction, and we are past the point of no return. Now the odds are you've heard this argument before, this idea that debt will destroy America. But today I'm going to shed some new light on how bad our government's debt addiction really is, using both new data and very, very old data. And I will also explain why everything will unwind faster than you could imagine. But first, please understand this. There has never been a country that became great or stayed great because of all the money it owed. That's a fact. Our Founding Fathers knew this and they issued stark warnings about debt. James Madison, the fourth President of the United States and father of the Constitution declared, I go on the principle that a public debt is a public curse and in a Republican government a greater curse than any other. Think about that. Madison, who was instrumental in the drafting of the U.S. Constitution and the key champion of the Bill of Rights, called our national debt a greater curse than any other. And he was far from the only one. Thomas Jefferson, the author of the Declaration of Independence and third president of the United States, warned, we must not let our rulers load us with perpetual debt. Secretary of the Treasury Alexander Hamilton stated, allow a government to decline paying its debts and you overthrow all public morality. George Washington said, Avoid occasions of expense and avoid likewise the accumulation of debt. Benjamin Franklin stated, when you run in debt, you give to another power over your liberty. Unfortunately, our current leaders in Washington have ignored warnings from our forefathers. Instead of fueling America's growth through productivity, they went the easy route, debt and more debt. The last time anyone talked about our debt was 2011 when our national debt ceiling was breached. Republicans and Democrats went at each other trying to come up with solutions while our debt rating was actually downgraded by Standard & Poor's. Just take a look at what our debt was per person in the United States compared to other nations that were in a horrible financial situation. Our debt per person was far higher than countries like Spain, Portugal, and even Greece. As fear grew, the stock market dropped by 25%. There was a brief panic. Keep in mind, at the time, our national debt was hitting a mere $14 trillion. And images of how bad the debt was, such as this one, circulated around the Internet. This image is a reflection of how big our national debt would be if you stacked it up using $100 bills. As you can see, it's truly a curse. It is unfathomable how we will ever dig ourselves out of this mess. To stop the panic, Congress came up with a patchwork solution to cut future spending. Since then, we have all moved on. For most Americans, our national debt is no longer a concern. It's no longer a topic of conversation, but fact is, it should be. The patchwork was merely that, a patchwork. Consider this. Since we employed the patchwork solution to cut future spending, the federal debt has continued to go up at an accelerated level from $14 trillion to over $18 trillion. As you can see, we are adding about $1 trillion in debt per year. This chart in itself is terrifying. But I want to address words like million, billion, and trillion, as they are thrown out there all the time. The problem is that it is hard to grasp how incredibly big one trillion really is. So think about it this way. One million seconds was 12 days ago. One billion seconds was 31 years ago. And one trillion seconds, that was 31,000 years ago. Yet as mentioned, our debt grew by more than one trillion dollars in the last year, or $33,000 per second. In fact, America's debt increased more last year than it did during our whole first 200 years as a nation. If you go back to 1980, when Ronald Reagan was elected, our nation had less than $1 trillion in debt. 
Since then, in just 35 years, our debt has soared 18-fold. To make it real personal, $18 trillion means you owe 56000 This debt truly is, as James Madison phrased it, a curse. Never before has any nation ever accumulated so much debt at such an alarming rate. Let me say that again. Never before has any nation ever accumulated so much debt at such an alarming rate. It's frightening and it's unsustainable. Perhaps the big question is, how did we get here? The answer is simple. Politicians spent more money than we citizens could pay. Take a look at this chart real quick. The red line is our government's expenditures, and the blue line is the government's receipts, as in your tax dollars. Notice how from 1950 to 1970 that expenses and receipts were nearly equal, nothing to worry about. But starting after 1970, things changed. The government wanted to spend more than it received. Sure, in the late 90s, we had two years where we had a surplus. But as you can see, that faded quickly, and since then, debt addiction has only gotten worse. Right now, we spend about $1 trillion more per year than we receive. Hence why our debt only gets bigger every year. Our government just keeps issuing treasury bills, notes, and bonds in order to make up the difference. Again, we are actually losing $33,000 per second, and you personally owe $56,000. But guess what? The $18 trillion debt is not the figure that scares the hell out of me. You see, this chart only includes our current expenses. It does not include unfunded liabilities like Social Security, Medicaid, Medicare, unemployment compensation, food stamps, and more. And that's what scares the hell out of me. You see, America's total indebtedness, known as the fiscal gap, isn't $18 trillion. It is $210 trillion. That is over 10 times greater than what our government states. That's a staggering $658,307 per person in the United States. That's how much you owe and how much each one of your family members owe. They will be cursed with dragging this debt around with them for the rest of their lives. And it is only getting worse every day. Again, that is $210 trillion in debt and unfunded liabilities. Think of it this way. If America were a person, that person would have $51,000 in income and $60,500 in expenses. That person is going into debt $9,500 every year. His current debt would be $311,000. But according to this fiscal gap, he has a massive balloon payment coming up for an amount of $3.6 million. Where is this guy going to get that money from? Odds are, you wouldn't loan that person money. I sure wouldn't. But without having a choice, you already have, because you are an American. You see, the American government made promises. A promise to pay lots and lots of entitlements. Many of these are great promises. The problem is the politicians never figured out how to deliver on those promises. Why would they? All they care about is making people happy during their four years in office so they can get another four years. I can only imagine the disappointment in our founding fathers' eyes if they were to see this today. They worked endlessly and risked their lives to create an America that would provide life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness for eternity. But politicians over the last several decades have ruined it, and this debt game is over. You see, while most Americans have moved on after the entire 2011 debt ceiling debacle, most of the sophisticated money managers from around the world still remember it. And they know what most Americans aren't willing to admit. A healthy nation grows from productivity, not debt. And now the chickens are coming home to roost. We are past the point of no return. We cannot dig ourselves out of this hole because we are literally in a situation where we are funding debt to pay more debt. That's like a person taking out a credit card to pay off an existing card. It's a dangerous maneuver that will end very, very badly. How far away are we from this end? Well, historically, foreign countries were happy to feed our debt addiction through buying U.S. treasuries. But that practice is coming to a close. ABC News reports that Russia will sell U.S. treasuries. 
China Daily writes that China cuts U.S. Treasury holdings. But it's not just Russia and China ditching U.S. debt. Over the last month alone, foreign countries have dropped $56 billion in U.S. Treasuries. Japan, China, Belgium, Switzerland, the United Kingdom, Mexico, France, Germany, and even Israel are bailing on us. And if other countries stop buying our debt, we have only one choice. No, it's not default. It's more manipulative than that. The next patchwork solution is just to create more money out of thin air in order to buy our own debt. You see, back in 1913, our government formed an organization called the Federal Reserve. This is a group of 12 unelected officials who were basically put in charge of monitoring the entire economy. But like many government agencies, their solutions to the problems at hand are often worse than the problems themselves. Case in point. After the 2008 collapse and the 2011 fiasco, there were not enough willing buyers for trillions upon trillions in new U.S. debt. So the Federal Reserve under Fed Chief Benjamin Bernanke did something unprecedented. Take a look at this chart. The Federal Reserve started buying our own government debt by the truckloads. This chart reveals that while the Federal Reserve has bought a little bit of federal debt over time, but recently, that amount has skyrocketed. According to recent data, the Federal Reserve financed 71% of the net treasuries. Think about how it's insane and how dangerous this is. We are creating money out of thin air to finance the government's massive spending on programs that don't pay their way. This is not sustainable. After the President's last State of the Union address, the Congressional Budget Office came out with a report stating that our debt is unsustainable. Yet Republicans and Democrats alike are not willing to back down on their spending. Barron says that the fiscal state of America is in danger of hitting an iceberg. Forbes says one day this unsustainable path we're on will reach its day of reckoning. And just think, these comments came after a year when the IRS pulled in a record amount of taxes from hard-working citizens. Unfortunately for America, our backs are up against a wall. The Federal Reserve has printed us into a corner, and we are out of ammo. Of course, if our politicians had listened to our founding fathers, they would have known better. They would have known that this would be a curse. With foreign holders scaling back their investments in U.S. debt, the Federal Reserve will be forced to buy more and more government debt by printing more and more dollars. And as the printing presses turn, it will make U.S. debt more perilous. Again, the solutions to the problems have become the problems themselves. Not to mention the Federal Reserve, the wizards who set interest rates, have emptied their bag of tricks. Current Fed Chief Janet Yellen can no longer reduce interest rates to stimulate the economy. They have already lowered rates to basically zero. And with no more money to borrow to fuel our economy, all these cracks will only get wider, a lot wider. Our economy is past the point of no return. The government, Wall Street, and Federal Reserve are doing everything they can to keep it afloat, to artificially prop it up. No doubt they'll continue to create trillions out of thin air, print money, and try to keep interest rates low. But this is not viable. It can't go on much longer. The cracks I've been discussing are getting bigger, and the base of our foundation is getting weaker and weaker every single day this collapse will unleash a 50% stock market drop. I already showed you how the, the margin debt ratio is at historic levels. I also showed you how the market participation rate is extremely low. And I also showed you how the PE ratio of the stock market is hitting greedy highs. This market will collapse. The only reason it hasn't yet is because our government has spent trillions of dollars through quantitative easing and bailing out the banks. But when it does collapse, those who read my strategic investment newsletter will be there to scoop up some key companies on the cheap. Real estate will also plunge by 40%. If you have equity in your home, a good percentage of it will get wiped out, perhaps all of it. But there is a simple way for you to protect yourself, a cheap form of insurance that I tell you about in my newsletter that can actually protect you from a real estate collapse. Additionally, the economy will come to a standstill. The velocity of money will continue to drop despite the federal government's efforts. 
In fact, nearly $2.3 trillion in new money was created by the government after 2008. Of that amount, 81% is now sitting idly in excess reserves in private banks. My point is, despite the Fed's efforts, money is not circulating. Unemployment will triple. In a sense, it already has. As I showed you, the real unemployment rate is 23%, far higher than the government's stated 5.5%. Savings accounts will drop by 30% within the next year. Then they will continue to drop another 20% in the few years after that. Again, I will show you how to sidestep this carnage. It's easier than you can imagine, and you can do it from the comfort of your living room. The question is not, will this collapse come? No, the question is, when will it come? When will that one grain of sand send everything toppling? When will we borrow $1 too much? As we go $33,000 more in debt per second, we will become more and more fragile. In fact, during the course of this presentation, our country will have gone another $100 million in debt. Never before in history has a nation gone this far in debt. Never before has a country promised so much free stuff with no way to pay for it. Never before has a foundation been this weak. I fear this collapse will devastate millions of hardworking Americans who have no clue this is coming. Your hardworking neighbors, your doctor, your coworkers, everyone will feel the pain unless they are warned. Don't let it catch you by surprise. As a husband and father, I am gravely concerned. I have taken steps to protect my family. They are the same steps you can take once you accept a free copy of my new book, The Age of Deception, and a risk-free membership of strategic investment. Now let me remind you, as grim as this all looks, I see a silver lining in it. Yes, the collapse will be ugly and horrific, but for you and readers of Strategic Investment, the collapse is actually a reset, a chance to reboot the economy on a firm foundation of productivity instead of on debt. This next arrow will be the genesis of new ideas and new ways of doing business. Just like the 1930s, when companies like Zenith Radio, International Paper and Power, and Douglas Aircraft thrived, and went up by 26,000%. The next era will bring about new opportunities for those positioned to take advantage of them. Let me say that again. This next era will bring about new opportunities for those positioned to take advantage of them. Imagine having the chance to make 100% gains, 500% gains, and 1,000% gains, perhaps even as much as 26,000%. It's possible. You just need a game plan, but don't try to navigate this new economy on your own. I'm not going to attempt it. I say that as a person who has studied these markets his whole life. I can't do it alone. That's why I've surrounded myself with a team of experts who know a lot about the markets and can help me keep my emotions in check when this collapse comes. If you try to invest on your own, well, frankly, you might start listening to the wrong people, people who have their best interests at heart, not yours. Think about it. It's in the best interest of most parties, the media, the brokerage community, Wall Street, corporations, even the government, to have you believe everything is chugging along fine. They don't want you to know the truth. They don't want you to know that this economic recovery is a statistical illusion, that it is fueled by debt, by the printing of trillions of dollars and keeping interest rates at historic lows. This is a game of let's pretend that you are not meant to win. If everyone found out, the economic collapse will unwind. The powers that be would rather pretend that this economic monster isn't staring them in the face and breathing down their neck. The collapse is looming. If you want to protect your livelihood and your family from the breaking point that lies ahead, if you'd like me to help you sidestep the calamity and guide you to the money-making opportunities as they unfold, the best thing to do now is click the button below this video. When you do, you'll find out how to claim your free copy of my book, The Age of Deception, along with a risk-free membership to Strategic Investment. As a member, every month I will send you a 12-page synopsis of what is happening in the economy and how you can navigate it for safety and profits. I even have a model portfolio that you can track. 
I already showed you the closed gains that you could have received. Of course, as the crash starts to unfold, we will become very strategic with our investments. Oftentimes, I will show you how to make money when stocks go down, like when we made 200% during the last major crash. Throughout this presentation, I've shown you compelling evidence that a collapse is near, a collapse that will send stocks down by 50% or more, real estate tumbling by 40%, savings accounts down by 30%, and unemployment tripling. Mark my word, this collapse will strike. Let's survive this together. Better yet, let's prosper through this together. To get all the details on how to claim your free book and a risk-free membership to Strategic Investment, simply click the button below this video. Thank you so much for watching this presentation. I'm confident that in six to 12 months from now, You'll look back on this day and be glad you took the time to watch this video. You will still be able to live out that amazing American dream, but do it the right way. Your American dream will have a secure foundation with a cornerstone based in strategic investments. Thanks again for watching.